Savings here and the topic is self cycle. The book is Bruce Albert and I'm going to discuss only the important one. So uh, the cell cycle definition as you know there is a division of cells to form data cells. Uh, this is the equality cells with different phases. Here is the important little bit the G1, S and G2 together called the interphase approximately 23 hours and the one hour for M phase. The interphase, the four phase, four metaphase are different phases for cell cycle. This shows the how this metaphase and phase transitions occur and how this microtubule arranged to hold the chromosomes in different positions during the cell cycle. Then coming to this uh, cell cycle control similar in all carriers, uh, it shows about the four phases of cell cycle, nothing so important here. Sorry for the time. This is uh, one of most important, or uh, not not that important, but the immunofluorescence micrograph of the BRDO level epithelial cells. Here is a picture, and here the cells being uh, being uh, labeled labeled with the fluorescent anti BRDO antibodies, which is shown in green color. The stand cause this level to S phase cell stage that helps. So it is a good labeling agent. Then. Yeah, in this picture you can see here an important one. Uh, as you can see in this picture, the the y axis shows the number of cells, where the x axis shows the relative amount of DNA per cell. Yes, per cell. And this graph is being plotted by using the flow cytometry. Uh, this exactly it is a flow cytometer, of which is being tagged with a fluorescence activated cell sorter. Uh, which this fluorescence emission detects the amount of DNA because this fluorescence molecule being used get tagged with the DNA and the fluorescence property will depend on the amount of the present of DNA molecule. So here is it written also the DNA content of the individual cells is determined in a flow cytometer by the mm, by this uh, what we call the the, the proportion of the amount of the DNA each cell, yes, the amount of fluorescence is directly proportional to the amount of DNA in each cell. So, in this uh, graph, as you can see, it shows the relative amount of DNA per cell. And we know that during this growth of a cell, the cell has to move from the G1 to S and then to G to phase. So, the ultimately, the number of DNA contain of the DNA in the G1 phase is compared to less than the S phase because in S phase there is a continuous process of DNA replacement being occurring at that time so which contain more a uh, little bit much not but it also possess uh, more amount of DNA as compared to that of the G1 phase but in, as compared to the G2 phase it has uh, less amount of uh, fluorescence uh, sorry, less amount of DNA as compared to G2 and the G2 contains uh, higher amount of uh, this DNA that means twice the number of the G in case of your G1 so this graph shows how the amount of number of cells during at inside tissue or inside the body uh, the number of cells is very uh, from this to this means the G1 phase cell has more in number as compared to that of the S phase and then compared to the G2 phase that means in this graph, the G1 phase has maximum number of cells in this stage, and the minimum number of cells are in S page. And that's what is very critical. The, this is the replication very critical. Then another important thing in this chapter, uh, yes, the transition state. This is the three major regulatory transitions which regulate the shifting of uh, the cell cycle from one cell st stage to another cell stage or phase. So the first one is the start or in what you call a late G1 phase. That is where the cell has to decide whether it has to undergo division or not. And this will be regulated by various different ki kinds of stress factor and also like some growth hormones like which could be also stimulate otherwise will be stopped this cell cycle 
Also, the nutrition also plays an important role because if the cells is deficient with nutrition um, or even the organelles are not formed, then cell will be stopped uh, for some time uh, or maybe not decide. And this is also the stage where the G1 actually occurs because it's not decided. So whatever maybe forget about the start site and one, uh, the second one is the G2 M transition and the last one is your metaphase NFS transition. So in this picture, the the enter cell cycle is the start position. It's whether it's checked whether the environment is favorable or not. Important. The second one is the G two M transition, which is the uh, I mean like your G two M transition where the chromosomes that has to be uh, duplicate and duplicated will check whether this uh, DNA is replicated completely or not. And here also check the environment is favorable or not. And the last one is your metaphase NFS transitions. Here it's checked that whether all the chromosomes are arranged in this metaphase region, I mean the middle region of the cells, uh, to be get separated properly or not. If it will be not separated properly, then it will be also prohibit the cells for the cells deep cell, cell, cell cycle. Of the, I mean for the stages of the cell cycle. So this is important. Uh, start G2M transition and metaphase NFS transitions. Then coming to the cell cycle control. Uh, the system depends on a cyclical activator cycling dependent protein kinase CDK. That's uh, okay. So here we could get the one of the uh, another important one. The cell cycle control system depends on a cyclically activated cycling dependent protein kinase. Well itself as you can see here the picture shown the cycling and CDK being complex with each other to regulate various kinds of different phases of the cell cycle. The cycling molecules which is undergo cyclical degradation and also being also once again being produced to being functional. So the cyclic changes of this protein will cause it to name cycling. Whereas in other case the CD, I mean, on the other hand, the CDK, the cyclin dependent kinase, which depend on the cyclin molecules to be get functional, is not degraded, whether it being completely permanently present there. So then the activity of CDK is important. The activity of the CDK is important, and this picture clearly reveals this. As you can see here, the G1 as G2, G2 M transitions, the metaphenomic transitions. This different region of the cell cycle being regulated by this activation of this enzyme because this enzyme will ultimately phosphorylate the enzymes we need to be get phosphorylated to uh, for the to to uh, proceed the different cell stage or cell cycle stages. So in this first one, you can see that there is G1 S C D K G1 S C D K complex which is regulate the start of G1 phase which means when the cell acquire all the nutrients a sufficient amount of energy and it will be ready to uh, replication and division of cells at that point that means the what we call the G1 transition state which is begins from the late G1 stage at that region the G1 SCDK cause this I mean, it has a very important role. Then coming to this S C D K and cycling, here it's transp where here it actually initiates the move. I mean, initiates the S phase processes like your replication of DNA uh, and uh, yes, the replication of DNA. And coming to this M C D K complex here, it initiates the transition from the G two to M phase. And uh, this is uh, it called the uh, G2M transitions, and uh, it checks whether the DNA is completely replicated or not. Is there any mutation, any kind of defects in the replicated DNA? So it will be get checked and will be uh, further uh, moved. And this is uh, regulated by this MCDK. And then coming to this APC, that is another phase promoting complex where it is important that it inhibit the action of the M C D K by degradation by causing the degradation of the M cyclin and initiate the metaphase anaphase transitions and this is occurred by some separate sacred enzyme phosphorylation we'll discuss in coming pages. What this is all about.
so next uh, important is this this is a picture of uh, this picture very important because it shows the major cycling and the cdk of the body breast and building east the body breast and the building east is being shown here is you can see that the g1 cdk and how this related with the other cycling and in how this uh, which state of the cell cycle that means sorry for the distance so it is a cycling cdk complex it is cycling it is the cdk partner it's not just important this uh, only this two is important not uh, that one okay we'll discuss in this coming slide but uh, the this is g1 cdk cycling d g1 s cdk cycling e s cdk cycling a m cdk cycling b so this is the size cycling complex important whatever for example this now coming to this regulation of that cdk enzyme yes the cdk which is the enzyme is not uh, i mean activated always even in though even though it uh, bind with that of the cycling this complex still is uh, non functional or little bit functional to make it completely fully functional we have s we need some other enzyme to activate this complex and there is also some protein which regulate by deactivating this complex activity so coming to this here uh, you can see there is a cake c a k cake it is a cdk activating enzyme this enzyme what it did i mean what it does sorry uh, what it it's uh, activate this cycling cdk complex by phosphorylating the cdk i mean uh, some region mostly it like sec uh, serin i think so so where it phosphorylate and activate this cdk enzyme to be fully activated because here it shows the partially activated and here it shows the fully activated and this conversion from partially to fully activation is done by the cdk activating kinase then coming to oh, the cdk activity can be suppressed by the inhibitory phosphorylation that is by means done by the cdk inhibitory protein it's called cki cdk inhibitory proteins so what it does actually uh, it this uh, sorry for this one the, the cdk inhibitor proteins uh, example is your weee1 yes weee1 which inhibits the activity of cdk and uh, this cause in i will better show in this picture here is the cycling cdk complex being also phosphorylated that is your full activated but when the v1 kinase phosphorylate some other region it's like uh, your some protein number uh, protein number of uh, serine or something like that where phosphorylation causes the inhibitory activity of that phosphate which causes the deactivation of that cdk cycling cdk complex but that inhibited inactivated uh, cdk cycling complex could also be made functional by CD, CDC25 phosphatase that means the CDC25 phosphatase will remove this phosphate group that will be done that will attach by that V1, V1 kinase and that cause activation of that second cdk complex once again that means CDC25 just remove that phosphate that inhibitory phosphate that is being added by that V1 kinase okay that cause once again the second cdk to get activated now there is coming to the regulated protein i mean regulated proteolysis trigger the metaphase to nfs transitions where here is written the k regulator of the metaphase to nfs transition is nfs promoting complex or what we call the cyclosome there is the apc slide c that is the nfs promoting complex cyclosome so it is important here is that the ubiquitin ligase family enzyme as you can see used in numbers of the other well better understand in this diagram actually sorry here, here you can see that the cdk cycling is here it also phosphorylated that means it is activated okay so we have an activated cycling cdk complex now we have a p27 so now what is that p27 uh, I have not discussed about that, but uh, uh, there is actually two types of uh, CDK inhibitory protein. One is your CIP-KIP, 
that is your CDK interacting protein and the kinase inhibitor protein this is one another one is your ink 4 that means inhibitors of the kinase 4 so this is the two variants of uh, pr inhibitor proteins which will be deactivate your CDK complex and this P27 is belongs to the SIP keep SIP or keep whatever we may be called the SIP or keep and it uh, inhibits the cycling A CDK2 activity so here in this case also what it does it binds with the CDK cycling only it binds with the complex never ever with that of the CDK or cycling because before or, or earlier we have seen that the regulation of the cycling CDK um, complex activity is uh, being inhibited or being activated by means phosphorylation or by dephosphorylation at the site of uh, your CDK amino acids, some C amino acids of the only CDK. But here we are talking about the complex, where the complex is deactivated by binding of some inhibitor protein or inhibitor protein that is the CDK inhibitor protein, which completely bounds with that of the complex. Okay, never alone it binds. So this is this and uh, here's another thing important written here the securin and separate we will discuss in coming page. Uh, there is another ubiquitin like SCF, SCF we will discuss about later on in coming slides. Um, there is uh, okay so here is another important diagram. Here you can see that the activating subunit is the CDC20. So this is the CDC20 uh, and how it's important we have to understand the inactive APCC that means the APC anaphase body complex is inactivated and to be get fully activated I mean activator activation we need the CDC20 when CDC20 bind with that of the APC complex it calls its M cyclone CDK CDK, uh, CDK to get tagged with a uh, polyubutin chain and once the ubutin chain get attached here we can see it will undergo degradation and when it get undergo degradation we can see here very clearly the tagging of this ubiquitin is done by this ligase because the APC is a E3 ligase which tag ubiquitin molecule on the cyclin because cyclin will undergoes cyclical changes not the CDK because CDK will remain the same in this environment I mean inside the cytosol but cyclin will undergoes sequence I mean cyclical changes by degradation and once again formation okay so here is the E1 E2 which will help to let the ubiquitin near this E3 ligase E3 like it recognizes this M cycline and that causes the ubiquitination which causes the degradation of the M cycline proteasome and that's how the M phase transition is being regulated by this APC enzyme as I have discussed in uh, previous uh, pages if you remember or else you go to this previous near region video or uh, the timeless video so whatever so the control by proteolysis by scf we have shown the other day we also have shown the scf there this is activity of ubiquitin ligase scf is also a ubiquitin ligase that depends on the substrate binding subunits that is called an f box protein so whatever may be this is by f box protein so here you can see the cdk inhibitor protein that is the cki that means this, is, this inactivate the cdk and that cause uh, phosphorylated by this F box protein and that will undergoes the uh, polyubiquitin tagged and undergoes uh, protosomal degradation so this is how the SCF is being used to de control or regulate those CDK inhibitor proteins like your sip keep and ink 4 and just thus regulate the uh, and thus uh, keep on I mean functional those uh, CDK cycling complex because here the we can see the anaphase protein complex cause the degradation of the cycling CDK complex but here the SCF controls the activation of this not activation but it indirectly 
uh, keeping those cyclones DK complex to stay in active form by degrading those CDK inhibited proteins. Okay. Because CDK and LABR undergo proteolysis. I mean, undergo proteolysis, but with that is other condition. Normal condition, cycling undergoes, cycling undergoes changes by degradation. Not CDK. Okay. CDK only undergoes dephosphorylation and phosphorylation, which is caused um, activation or inactivation. So, here is the very important. Yes, it's a very important. In a very bright, also, you can take a screenshot if you want or else you have to if you have a book but not all important but uh, few are important the cdk activity enzyme activating the cdk v1 kinase you just keep on reading there is just as i've told you the protein kinase and the protein phosphatase that modify the cdk okay so the cdk activating kinase that is the cak that activating the sites of cdk as i told then we went kinase that caused the phosphorylation that caused the inactivation of that CDK. The CDK25 it removed that phosphate being added by the we one kinase and makes it also once again functional. Then the CDK inhibitor proteins like your P27, P21, P16 that also suppress the CDK. Okay. Then uh, your ubiquitin ligase and their activators. This is the E3 ubiquitin ligase like APC, CDC20, SCF. So these are the ubiquitin. I mean, yeah, uh, your ligase which cause the uh, activation or deactivation by making a tagging with the ubiquitin and cause the degradation of the acid. Uh, here the CDC20, the APC activating subunits in the cell triggers the initial activation of APC cell at metaphase to anaphase transitions stimulated by the MCDK activity. Okay. So this CD20 calls uh, activation of that APC so that APC will inhibit those M phase transition state so that it will uh, move to the uh, separation of the chromosome stage of the cell cycle. So uh, this is a very important figure, it's complete, better to have a screenshot if you want, sorry you can't put it on single frame, then ok so uh, here also is another important one, an overview of the cell cycle control system, <coughs> the favorable extracellular environment which cause the G1 CDK to activate to undergo cell cycle initiation which is caused the formation of the G1 as cyclin synthesis the S cyclin CDK and then the coming to this the S cyclin synthesis occurs which is uh, it's completely activation regulation is done here if you understand I should not read it read out all those things but you can simply understand here how the favorable con favorable environment good nutrition helps to activate the G1 CDK then the G1 S cyclin synthesized and uh, which is caused then further activation of the S cyclin synthesized which can combine effect on the G1 S CDK complexes if the DNA to get damaged then it will be inhibit the G1 S and S CDK to we get the stuck the, the stuck the cell and doing the G to G I mean the S uh, what is called the metaphase transition I mean sorry it is uh, your G to M transition transition if I am right, uh, sorry, this is the your that is your spindle assembly or mitotic checkpoint which is uh, there actually. Okay, and so if there is a failure in DNA replications, they also uh, stop the MCDK. And so, this is a picture of how this all regulated important DNA damage on later protein. So, this is a little bit about the cell cycle. Here is a summary. I think some things will be there inside the book I'm searching for. Okay, it's not all completed. Thank you. So S C D K initiates the DNA replications once process cycle. So DNA helicase on which the double helix and DNA replications enzyme are loaded into two single standard templates. This is not important. Okay, so here the ORC that means the origin recognition complex, then the pre-replicative complex that is what you call the pre. RC is important, okay, if you remember, because we are going to discuss about how 
the S phase cell cycle occurs or activate only for and only for one time to replicate those DNA. It's important because the DNA which undergoes replication only begins once and stopped immediate after it begins because otherwise it will produce multiple copies of DNA which will not be favorable for cells so it eventually die so to to not allow this kind of uh, error it will be very need to be regulated so what exactly happened you can see here during this S phase we need to activate activate <coughs> those SCDK activation okay so when the SCDK is activated the most important thing is that the replication product is formed and that cause the activation of the MCDK for the chromosomal segregation so it is being outcome of uh, a normal cell cycle but uh, okay it's fine I am going to see another picture I think this one the okay so yes I am searching for this picture sorry okay so here you can see that uh, during the activation of your SCDK, due to activation of your SCDK, which will cause your uh, activation of your uh, this some complex like your CDT1 and the CDC6 somewhere. Yes, it is here CDC6 and uh, the G1. I mean the ORC. So this is the uh, origin. The origin is a site at, at which. I mean, at where sorry <laughs> at where the origin rec recognition complex it means there is a protein complex which recognize recognize those origin region and that origin region when recognized by this complex it caused the attachment of the cdc6 there and when cdc6 get attached there it will the time for the helicase to go and bind there so here the the mcm helicase you can see this is the mini chromosome maintenance cro this is called MCM helicase, mini chromosome maintenance helicase. So this is the uh, carried out by the CDT1, which recognize, uh, which helps recognize uh, to that CDC6 and the binding with that CDC6, the CDT1 get removed out. Now this helicase enzyme with that of the that of your ORC, origin replicating complex, forms the pre-replicative complex that is called pre-RC. Now the initiator protein, the initiator protein, uh, get uh, the initiator protein, which will activate. I mean, which will uh, undergoes this uh, initiation process. And here you can see the different inactivation and activation of some other protein. Like here, uh, the SCDK caused the initiator protein to get activated. That caused the requirement DNA polymer enzyme, which will lead to the activation of different kinds of enzymes, which will be required during the replication of the DNA. Here also, you can see the inactivation of some uh, ORC, CDC6, and CDT1 also. That will, that will cause this is very important because uh, inactivation of this uh, C ORC, CDC6, and CDT1 that caused one time replication of the DNA so this inactivation of this thing this these three things is very important otherwise the DNA will replicate multiple times at that region and that will not required at all so this is enzymes which will cause factorization activation of different enzymes helicase opens replicates replicate the DNA into two different segments that's very important and another one is important here is the as I've told you, the function of an another function of the APC, unofficial protein complex, which will cause the separation of this SCC1 complex. As you can see here, the SCC1, which holds those uh, uh, ring structure which bound the chromosome to be get separated. Those chromosomes will not be able to separate it because of that ring structure that will be locked by this SCC1. And so this SCC1 need to be get removed out. That means it need to be get degraded, and that will be done by the ubiquitin tagging. And who gonna tag those ubiquitin? It's the function of that APC, anaphase promoting complex, ligase enzyme, which will tag that ubiquitin molecules on that SCC, not SCC1, another enzyme. Uh, in this picture, I think there is a picture also here. Uh, if not, sorry for that. This is not the picture I'm searching for. 
okay so forget about that i am just saying you uh, actually here uh, there is a protein what we call the uh, i can't remember actually so yes there is a securin protein is there a securin protein here i think no so whatever uh, the, there is a securin protein which is a bind um, which is bound with enzyme what we call separage the separase is enzyme which will separate the scc1 and to activate this separase we have to remove that inhibitory protein that is your securin and that securin will be removed out by your apc complex activated apc complex and apc will activated by means of your by means of your cdc20 it's like a co-activator yes the cdc20 cdh1 are like the co-activator which will be activate this apc which will be cause the uh, degradation of the securin that cause the activation of the separase that separate cause the release of this scc1 complex and uh, remove this uh, separate this smc3 and smc1 molecule and thus the chromosome citrochromatids citrochromate will be free to separate during this transition of the dna i mean the spindle assembly checkpoint then uh, not so important not so important not so important positive self uh, this is uh, important also a little bit mm, and then anything else let me check this out complete book should i must i check go ahead condensing condensing you can see the five segment segment tables this is a picture which is showing uh, the metaphasmatotic spindles in animal cells which undergoes uh, uh, proper alignment and then uh, being holded at the region of the kinetic core with the help of microtubule will be ready to get separated and uh, here is how this positive end of this both the microtubule uh, which will be ready to get undergoes the uh, uh, degradation to get shorter and shorter which will cause them attracted towards their respective poles to carry their also respective chromosomes this is not also important this is not that important and uh, we are running out of time sorry me too sorry for that not that's important sorry i don't want to waste your time is there anything left to say yes this is one i'm thinking i need to tell you during this picture you can see the inactive apc complex need to get activated by the cdc20 when it get activated this will cause this securin to be get ubiquitinated and degraded then the inactive separase will be undergoes activated and that activation cause the release of that SCC1 as I have told there which will cause the separation of the chromosome and this is how it overcome the spindle assembly checkpoint. This is important. Who activate this enzyme? What? And who is helpful during this time? And also this activated FSC inactivate this MCD, MCDK cyclin so that there will be transition from the G2 to metaphase. Okay. Thank you. I don't think anything left more. I have done my job. It's now all your duty to complete your syllabus. I don't think that's important. This is a very good book, you know. I like this one. Mm -hmm. This is a graph being plotted important one not that important but uh, it's a little bit scientific you know uh, how the graph shows their concentration with the you can see their complete data told when the cdc20 bound with the fpc it will it activation cause the uh, inactivation of the m cycling and this is the graph also as shown here and the cdc cdh1 which is here which will activate after the activation of the cdc20 which eventually activate the CDH1, which activate this uh, and keeps on 
down or keeps on the m cycling level low in g1 so this is how the cdh1 and cdc20 is uh, cdc cdc20 are two important uh, this are also these two cdc20 and cdh1 also two homologous mitotic coactivators of the apc complex also so this is important one uh, this is important yes man writing anything left i don't think this is compulsion yes this 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 uh, thank you very much thank you very much it's 36 minute already video nothing left more what is this dna okay the dna damage blocks and cell division i will discuss in my next video for that thank you very